Today I'm going to bring up my childhood friend and someone that I've known for a really long time. Um, this is the Fat Jewish, a.k.a. Josh Ostrowski. Oh. Hi. Hey, hi. It's really great to meet you. It's good to be together. Okay. So, basically my first question for you is, you know, when did people start caring about you? When did you kind of get on the map? Or do people still not No, care? I was going to say, yeah. Yeah, people don't no, care. Nobody, nobody cares. Um, I, you know, it was a, it's been a long, um, it's been a long trippy journey, you know? Um, <clears throat> I was like a, you know, a TV writer. Um, and then I just like started doing Instagram as like a thing to amuse my, like, you know, completely stupid adult baby, um, you know, friends. And then like people started caring about that. And then like an audience started growing. And then I think like I peaked at probably D list celebrity. Yeah. E. So where are you now? F. Oh, <laughs> I don't know. Now it's like really unclear. Yeah, no, now I'm like, yeah, no, it's low. Um, but that like audience grew and then like from the, and then like, you know, at some point I was basically just like, you know, how long are people going to care about, you know, a guy with like a dildo on his head who like, you know, posts like fun content. Um, at some point I think you, you know, I was like, I got to do something that's going to like last. Cause like, I'm not fucking Matt Damon. Like no one's going to care about this for more than like three years. Um, so at that point I was like, I think I should probably, like start a brand. Um, and so I think now at this point, like it's less, you know, I do like less, it's, it's less like relevant. I mean, the kids think I'm like 1000 years old. Like some kid walked up to me on the street recently and was like, yo, fat you, man. Like you're an OG, man. When I was a kid, like I fucking watched you. And I was like, you're what? When you were, a, how old were you? Like in 2017, swag, Jesus, drip Lord, or whatever your like name is. Um, and he, like, thinks I'm fucking Abraham Lincoln. He thinks I'm one million years old, um, which is sick. And now, at some point, like, I had to basically move on to, and, like, start something. Now I can, like, I can, like, you know, empower kids to, like, make content because VCs um, in puffy vests that are also flat um, name, like, Jeff, give me money. And then I can give it to the kids. So it's pretty fucking yeah. sick. Yeah, that's a great pipeline. Though. Yeah, so the kids care about me now because, like, I can m help them make shit. Um, but... You know, Instagram was never, like, intended to be a market. I wasn't like, yeah, like, time to do, you know, time to do marketing. Like, I was just basically, I was an, I was an idiot long before Instagram. I wore an adult diaper on public access television. I'm old enough to, like, have cared about that. Um, and I was a moron long before that. It just happened that people glommed into it. And so then people started caring. Um, and then, yeah, I became a dealer celebrity. Right. And that was fucking weird. And since then, it's just been downhill or uphill. Personally and professionally? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. All, no, no, all downhill. downhill. This is just now therapy. So my dad, you know. Should, um, no, we actually agreed that we're not going to talk about our childhood trauma here. I know, but I didn't before. mean that. I, yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. You knew um, I didn't mean that. No, I, I You knew that I didn't mean that. Um, no, I think that, like, you know, relevance-wise, like, again, unless you're, like, you know, unless you're fucking like Rihanna, like you're not going to be relevant for more and like banking on yourself as, as talent. Um, you know, but it was, you know, I was in some direct to DVD, like teen movies, um, where I played like an older guy that I think are popular, like in the Philippines and stuff like that. Um, and so, uh, yeah, it was pretty, it was pretty awesome. But no, now, now it's just like, no one cares. I'm the oldest man on the internet. apparently. Right. No one cares. No, no not a single person. No, cares. nobody cares. Right. So, um, basically, you've had a few personal rebrands since you made your way into the internet in 2013. Um, as you mentioned, you did have that dildo hair, and you often came out shirtless, which I wasn't sure if that was going to be the move for today. But you did mention also that you've had a, a few personal rebrands. I do have so, emails from Adweek asking me not to wear assless leather chaps, so I will treasure those emails. Um, and I did not. So I just, like, want, yeah. Yeah. You're welcome. Is there anything you wanted to share about this outfit? You're welcome. No, the fit speaks for itself. Um, yeah. If you want Planned Parenthood merch, I make it. Um, yeah, so whatever. Um, no, yeah, I've done a couple a couple different rebrands. Because, again, you know, you got to, you know, switch it up. I'm like Madonna, you know, in that way. You right. You got to, like, keep. People compare you to Madonna all the time. A lot time. of different yeah. times. Yeah. Yeah. I actually, um, you know. You can pick it up because I'm about to literally drop it. Madonna and I spent some time together. We yeah. shot a commercial um, 
for my rosé company, and then um, we had a sleepover. Yeah. And I invited, like, she. No, we all know about that. But I want to talk. It's my, it's my favorite thing. So, okay. like, yeah. This is, like, what? And then she let me prank. We prank called Bono. It was super fun. Like, she yeah. just let me go through her phone and, like, prank call people. So, like, that was super sick. Um, yeah. But I went from, yeah, like, adult idiot moron to, like, right, Instagram celebrity, which, at, you know, at the beginning of Instagram, like, it wasn't, like, <clears throat> it wasn't that hard, I don't think, like, I, to get really big. You know what I mean? Because, like, none of the people at the brands knew what was going on, right? Like, I could just make up, like, all kinds of buzzwords and KPIs and, like, just for the brands would give me money. It was super sick. Because, like, no one knew what was going on in 2016. Seriously. Like, I'd just be like, we're going to get 20 billion, like, TTMBCs. And they were like, let's go to fucking lunch. Like, write him a check right now. Like, Burger King is going to sell a billion Whoppers. Um, and so I was really able to kind of, like, get over on that. And so that was really fun. Um, and then... Right, like C-list actor, plus size model, all that stuff, and yeah. now into like completely garbage, like brand owner. I like look at like graphs and charts on a screen, and like have employees and like give healthcare. Yeah, it's cool. Like I'm, I'm a Is this wash. A bit, or do you actually give healthcare? <clears throat> no, I give healthcare. Oh, okay. Why? You want to quit and work? Yeah, I don't have healthcare. I was so, like dental. Yeah. Is it comprehensive at Adweek? It's like fine. I don't know if I'm allowed to say that. You talk about their dental plan? Yeah. I feel like that's off I'll go off on some benefits right now. I don't yeah. know what the travel benefits are, but like we like we we give it out. Right. Um we give it out. And so yeah, there have been like a couple different um iterations of it, but you know, at the at the center of it has always been, you know, community and authenticity. Oh my god, authenticity uh -huh. is a banned word. We're not using authenticity. Oh, <clears throat> we're not allowed to say that? Yeah, or KPI, which you already broke that rule. I didn't know what that was until not that long ago, but now yeah. I know. Yeah, that's horrible. It's like key performance <laughs> indicators. There's so many fucking acronyms that people yeah, are like saying to me. It's really annoying. I can't take the acronym. Yeah, in my marketing department now, they're like saying constant. I don't know what they're talking about. Yeah. They're like, it's a TCB, but it's above the line. All right? Like OOH25 hyper vertical. And I'm like, this is. People what? just want to seem really smart, which I get. Right. I understand wanting to seem smart. Yeah. Like, I want to seem really stupid. Yeah. yeah. I've been going the opposite way on that for literally years. Yeah. But, all right, fine. I need to embrace that more. <laughs> we won't okay, talk about KP. Well, let's give something, you know, actionable that people can actually benefit from in this, in this talk, because I feel like we've gone on a lot of tangents. Um, do you have any advice? No, I'm talking about me. I'm honestly blaming me. No, oh, okay. I, I've right. been fucking up this interview. <clears throat> you could be do fired. You yeah. Do you have any advice for social media managers? Um, I think most, some of them are here. <clears throat> Just a few. Yeah, I just think it's just, yeah, I don't know. I just think like sound like, you know, sound like a human being. Like I think the days, I know it still goes on, but the wild days of like hamburger helper, like clapping back at Burger King and being like, yes, King, you know what I mean? Like slay it, like with the bussy, like, or whatever, like, you know what I mean? Like whatever accounts we're talking about. Getting old. It's just weird at this it's point. Weird. Like the hamburger yeah. helper glove, like going the fuck off at all times. Like it just got weird. Like I think we should just leave that behind. Um, and just really talk like actual human being um, people. Right. Yeah. And what do you look for in, in brand partnerships? Because I know you kind of went off the rails a little bit with Babe, and we'll get into the whole Babe Wines thing as well. But, yeah. But um, in 2020, when no one could fucking leave their house, you decided to get a little creative with that. <clears throat> so what, what, are, what advice do you have for people that, that really want to get into the brand partnership space? Um, I mean... It's interesting, like, being on both sides of it now, because, like, I obviously, like, took money from brands, and now I'm giving out the brand money, right. um, <clears throat> which is just, like, I don't know. I had trouble working with brands. What up? Um, <laughs> <clears throat> what was that? Oh, I, I don't know. He just, like, looked in your face. Yeah, I think he's mad at me. Yeah, no, yeah. you need the dental insurance for me now, because you're yeah, fired. He's, he's mad. <laughs> now you fucking need that dental. This is not a want. This is a need now. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> what was the question? I forget. Oh, it was about brand partnerships. Oh, yeah. I mean, I had trouble with brand partnerships because I think a lot of brands, like, wanted to connect with me and were like, we're fucking nuts. Like, our CEO is 11 years old. Like, make crazy content. Like, get disruptive. Be nuts. Like, Burger King does not give a shit about anything. And then as soon as I submitted a piece of content, they were like, this is absolutely a no-go. <clears throat> they were like, legal is just shooting this down. Can we get something else? And then I submitted something. They were like, not that. Actually, none of this. Right. Can we just do this? Here's a brief. And I was like, well, why did you guys tell me I could, you know what I'm saying? Like, Yeah, this. no, everyone thinks that they want it, and then you show it to them, and they're like, no. Right. Nobody really wants to get disrupted. No one wants to get disrupted. <laughs> That's the problem. Um, disruption. You know, love disruption. I 
I fucking love it. You know, it's good. It's good. I love seeing experiential activations being back. This is really nice. I'm glad we're all together, blasting each other with particles, doing activations together. This is nice. Yeah. It's been too long. Um, but I think from the brand side, we don't, we actually don't do that. Like we want creators and people who are actually going to go the fuck up. Oh. Are you mad at me? Oh my God. Look at all these beverages. Whatever you want. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, back to your regular schedule. Do you want to spin drift? I, I think I'm going to spill it everywhere. I'm, I'm just not going to touch that. Okay. Yeah. You're definitely I, I think it's fired. just a prop. Yeah. What was that? Yeah, I'm fired. That was okay. also weird. Um, um, <laughs> no, so we actually like want, <clears throat> with my new thing that we, I guess we'll talk about, like whatever, shamelessly, um, we actually want to like do wild shit. And so we're getting creators and letting them actually go the fuck off and apologizing later and not like, you know, letting a bunch of like legal shit birds like hold me down. Although they do. Right. So it's always it's always do it first, apologize second, and write it in your notes app, and then post that. Correct. Yes, exactly. Okay. Give a long notes apology. Yes. yes. As long as it's in that app, you're completely fine. You're fine if it's in the notes app. Um, and we're you know, <clears throat> let's see. And yeah, that was it. I mean, I had terrible experiences with brands because everything I wanted to do was like too much because I actually wanted to like make a difference. I think a lot of influencers just like will grab a check and do a thing, but like all of my all of I always wanted to like go over the top and get people talking one way or the other, whether they were like completely shitting on me or loving me, you know? Yeah. Um, as long as they're talking about me. So all press is good press. <clears throat> yes. Well. Yes. Everybody gonna say something, I'd be worried if they said nothing. Yeah. So yeah. Um, but that that was like a lot of like legal freakouts. Um, so we actually try to like go the fuck off. Mm -hmm. So would you say there's a difference between your fan base or and your consumer base, or are they kind of just all in one? the same thing i mean i think it's like a tricky line right like i think you're i think in like the you know i think on the early days right of instagram a lot of people tried to like <clears throat> shill as if it were regular content you know and we're kind of like yolo swag like check out this thing i'm just using like i'm not shilling and i think that a lot of people were like kids were like what the fuck like we see what you're doing here um i never did that and i was always like the thing is i'm relatively product agnostic like i have no product passions like i only created <clears throat> for those of you who know nothing about me, which is completely the right thing to do, um, I started like a canned wine that's sparkling that you like shotgun and then like get, you know, a UTI. Um, <clears throat> and now, and then like, you know, girls named Madison like did keg stands at the University of fucking, you know, Michigan. It was sick. Yeah. Um, but I didn't care about wine and I didn't care about any you of don't that. You like wine, right? I just, No, I'm not like a wine guy. I'm like a shitty domestic beer. Yeah, I'll drink like bum piss. Yeah. Hey, okay. <clears throat> I know. Sorry. It's the Adderall. You're getting a little. It's the Adderall. Um, just hold. So the, um, I just gave the, like, what my audience, what they wanted. It was sort of like a reverse engineer, right? They wanted, like, they wanted rosé. They wanted it in a can. They wanted to shotgun it. They wanted to make terrible decisions. I gave it to them. There was no, like, this is my passion. Like, I'm a founder. Like. I'm writing on the window, you know what I mean? Like, let's change the fucking world. I just built an audience and then gave them exactly what it is that they wanted. So I, I think, like, looking at them as consumers was not exactly right, but I kind of, like, let them drive and dictate, like, exactly what the fuck. Right. Like, I know everyone now is, like, audience listening and, like, all this shit. You but put them in the driver's seat. Is that a saying? A apparently. Okay. <laughs> all right. Um, sick. We could double click on that. Yeah. I don't know. I we heard could some, circle back. I don't know. I heard some guy say I that. think we could close the loop on Oh, this, my God. You know, yeah. Days. We could definitely touch base. We should fucking touch base. Um, and so, like, you know, that was, I think I always didn't look at them as consumers, but actually, like, as just, like, people, and I could give them what the fuck they wanted. Okay. And, but now you're becoming a little bit of a philanthropist, right? So let's, let's share with the group what your next endeavor, or wait, is that off the record? <clears throat> what? No. There's no secrets with this group. What? Okay. With this group? Our, um, our really close friends. Yes. So. With, all, with um, all of our really close friends in one room. Right. I'm also on Molly, so I can't, I just... <laughs> I just feel like I've known you guys my whole life. You know what I mean? I'm just like, you're so fucking talented. And I They're think, all really talented. Yeah, and I just like love you guys. Um, yeah. So, yeah, because after that, um, after so we sold the wine to um, Anheuser-Busch, which was interesting. And then um, after that, we like went into the pandy, if you will. And I was like, what, you know, what should we do next? You know, like, what do people fucking want? Um, and what I figured out at that point was that like no one – like wants to work at a regular job and like people want to do their own fucking thing, whether they're going to be like a regular freelancer or they're going to start like a CBD <clears throat> tampon company or whatever, um, which is a good idea if anyone wants to do that with me. Um, and so, um, and then I was like, wait, cause like, and then I read a stat that like 55% of the country was going to be a freelancer in the next five years. And then I was like, fuck it. 
like who's like helping people. Cause when I started the wine company it was like four creative Muppets with really good marketing ideas. And we were like, we know the billboards. But then we were like, wait, how do we like make wine? Or like, how do we like start an LLC? Or like, what the fuck are we doing? Um, how do we do anything at all? Like what are actual taxes? And so like, I'm definitely going to jail at some point. So um, we basically decided to become like the back office and like the fucking, um, and like, you know, the, the sort of like ecosystem for all freelancers and small businesses and creatives. And so we do everything, invoices, taxes, like all the things you could ever fucking need, whether you're on your own or whether you're like a business of five, because like no one fucking knows how to do anything. You play, a, you pay like a flat fee and it's, it's really actually fire. And then I think as that went on, I was like, oh wait, people actually really need this. Not that people didn't need UTIs from Can Wine, but I think that this, like people like really actually want this. And I think that this is like, you should be able to like work wherever you want, however you want, do whatever the fuck you want. But like someone actually has to like help you. Right. Because like you have sick ideas, but like how do you actually do literally anything? So it's all about the death of the W-2. It's the de- it's the sunset of the W-2 economy. Right. Yeah. Because you really should be able to do whatever you want. So I now I think I actually am accidentally helping. Yeah. Um, and that's like sick because I am a giver. Because But you never, you never start your day and say like I want to do something good. You kind of just fall into it accidentally. Yes. Or, or would you consider yourself a good person? Damn. Now we, like, are on ecstasy. Um, yeah. Uh, no, I mean, I'm a trash human, but not, like, in a toxic way. Yeah. Yeah, like, in a fun way. Like, a fun trash. Yeah, yeah like you're not gar- toxic. Like, fun garbage, yeah. yeah. Um, no, but I think, you know, my Instagram, I think, was, like, designed to, like, you know, give people just, you know, a quick laugh. Yeah. yeah take them out of their day. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So, I mean, haters are everywhere. I have a lot of haters. I'm sure you Do all you have. you have a lot of haters? No, I'm not really famous you want enough more to haters. have haters. Yeah, you yes. need more haters. I kind of want haters. I wish Is someone, that toxic? Someone should be you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, one of you, like, hate me? Yeah. Can someone, like, you have no haters here. <laughs> I, no, I need to tell you, you have zero haters. haters. Um, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, I don't, I, I think that, like, the internet um, is, like, fire. I love everybody screaming at each other. Like, I'm really, like, 100% down to, like, shit on people, people to shit on me. Um, I'm, tr- like, all day long. Like, I'm still trolling celebs. I want people to, like, people on the internet just say really extreme things to me at all times. Yeah. Like, someone's either, like, I want to, like, bronze your dick and wear it around my neck. I'm obsessed with you. Or they're, like, I literally want you to die right now in the ground. And I'm, like, this is so much. Like, it's, nine, <laughs> it's like, 9.15. <laughs> on a Tuesday, like, get a fucking muffin. Like, just everybody relax. Like, you should not like me that much, and you should not hate me that much. Um, and so, I just, again, as long as people are, like, talking about it, then it's fucking good. I'm serious. Like, as long as people are going off, um, then it's, it's a good thing one way or the other. Yeah. So if I was going to say KPI during this interview, how do you measure... Is it measure your KPIs? Or, oh, no, no, no. Like what, you don't know. what are your KPIs? You're trying to seem less corporate. Yeah. 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 Um, my KPIs are, <clears throat> again, people just people talking. I, you know, it's interesting, like, as things have gotten more, and we talked about this, like, as things have gotten more digital and people just sort of, like, pump money into, like, the Instagram Facebook algorithm and, like, stuff all their money in Lord Zuckerberg's mouth, um, <clears throat> we've actually gone the other way, and I do, like, I went super IRL with it. Um, do, like, a lot of events um, for the wine. We did, like, raves and, like, all kinds of shit. Um, and I think even though I'm, like, moving into the finance space, I think it's an even more ripe opportunity to, like, do really, like, good fucking events. And not just sponsor other people's events. Like, throw a finance rave. Um, yeah. <clears throat> sponsored by Four Loco. Right. You know what I mean? And we, we also, we're going to maybe talk about, because you're, you're not, like, a metaverse guy, but you don't necessarily have, like, a problem with the metaverse, right? No, I hang out there. Yeah. It's like, why does it look so shitty? Someone here knows. Like, why does it look, so- I went to, like, I went to some, like, weird party with Rick Astley, you know, the Never Gonna Give You Up guy in a Japanese train station, and, like, a bunch of guys who look, were, like, Rasta. It, you know, and I was like, why does this look so bad? Like, I don't really understand it. Yeah. Um, I don't really understand it. So I don't think, I just don't think we're, like, ready for all that. And I think that especially post-Pandy, because I can only imagine what you guys were doing in your apartments for two years. Um, like, your browser histories are nuts. Um, the... You know, I really think that I, I, would, I would rather lean into sort of an IRL vibe and, like, throw parties and, like, encourage yeah. people to make, like, terrible real-life decisions, um, you know, in the name it's, of finance. It's all about kind of converging the two, would you say? You, you said that during our prep call. I, didn't, I don't know. It would be cool if I just was like, what the fuck? Yeah, yeah, no. Yes, the IRL to URL kind of loop is, like, where I go, which is, like, how do you, like, 
how do you put up a billboard and get someone to post it online? How do you like reach somebody on the internet and like get them to come to an event and actually do something? Um, and as the people go more and more metaverse, like I don't know why I'd be shopping at a Walmart in the metaverse, but I do know that like everybody wants to like go to a fucking rave and like, you know, um, like a lot of people do and like, you know, really um, disrespect yourself and your body. Yeah. All right. So I think that's a great way to end all about disrespecting ourselves. <clears throat> and our bodies. Um, yeah. I think that's and right. And our bodies. Yeah. That's right. So I think we do have some key takeaways. I don't know. Oh, yeah. They are here on the screen. Can you read that? I, or, I, think I do love a slide. Oh, they're yeah. Right. Um, yeah, exactly. That the first one is like URL to IRL, which is just like you've got to do shit in real life. Like I just don't we're not fully ready for the metaverse. I mean, porno looks great, I've heard. And things are but I just like, are we really there? Like, I don't know. I mean, I did go see Paris Hilton DJ in the metaverse and it was fire. Yeah. So that was sick. But I just like don't think I just don't think we're ready for all that. And especially post this thing. Um, I think that we post Pandy, I think we all need to like get out there and like get into some shit. Um <clears throat> two is like you know, building a brand is, is like fucking hard, right? There's probably a lot of people who are like, you posted internet content, like that wasn't hard, but like built an audience, but like building a brand and like actually marketing it is like, it's just like, you're not going to post, it's not 2015. Like it's really, I'm telling you, the, the Facebook, Instagram algorithms are fucking dry and like the ways to like really fucking lower your CAC. No, I just like give you exactly what is that like word? Like the ways to like lower customer acquisition costs and shit are like complicated because like, it's just not as easy um, anymore. So you got to get like really fucking creative with it. And like how much noise is there, right? There's 47 trillion brands. Like I had an easier time with Babe because there were like seven canned beverages when I started it in 2015. And now there's like 400,000, like there's like a- You C disrupted. There's Sorry. like a CBD dandelion disrupted. water. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? There's everything. Um, and so, you know, I think you just like, you, you, the building a thing is as hard as it ever was. Like you have to like do actual shit. Um, and I think that at least for me, like a lot of younger people like don't, I think they just want to post something and like make it hot. And so I think I'm like taking it upon myself to help them realize you actually have to like, you got to actually like build it. I think I'm old enough to know that. Um, Cause like you can keep taking brand checks, but eventually the internet is not going to give a shit about you. They're just not. And so like, you really have to like get, like take something away with you because you're going to be hot for like 10 seconds, right? You guys are going to like see a lot of TikTokers and shit. And like, I fear for them in like five years and they're going to make sick memories and do sick shit. But like what in five years? Um, so like, you know, trying to like help them like build some businesses so that they can like actually do it, whatever. Um, cause I'm a fucking giver. And then, um, yeah. Treat consumers the same honesty as your fan base. Yeah. Whatever. Right. That. Yeah. I think I, I actually came up with that. Yeah. I don't know what it means, but I like it. Yeah. Okay. I love it. Um, I think that's right. I think just like our, you know, marketing wise, like we just, you know, talk, just like talk more like human beings and like ask more questions and like talk to more fucking people, less decisions made in like a weird conference room with a whiteboard and like more like get out there. And like, I actually just talk to the kids, not like actual kids. Um, <clears throat> the restraining order prevents that, but I can't, but like ask them what they want and then give it to them. Seriously, give people what they fucking want. Like you don't know, there's no gut decisions. Like just ask people, people are down to tell you what they want. If you're going to like serve it to them in a real, like meaningful way. Yeah. For sure. Um, I think that people might have a few questions for you. So I think that we're going to, you know, pivot our way, if you will, into the question section. Um, so, hey, Chris, could you refresh? Oh, I don't think that's a question. Fun trash. New goal is to be fun trash. Is anyone hating on me here? I don't think so. Wait, go back to that? I Wait, didn't get all go those. back to that? I like the person who just had like a personal issue. They were like, I can't see anything. Is there a firewall? It's my, oh, it's my dad. <laughs> right. Hello? Like, is this? Oh, okay. All right. We are going to ask some questions. So if anyone wants to like raise their hand, I can call on them. Yeah, hell yeah. Are you guys nervous? Oh, here. Yes. You. What? Sorry, I'm very unprepared for this. Hi. <laughs> yeah. Say, what do you think about TikTok in general? It's the sick. What? It's the sickest of all time. <laughs> what? I think it's like undefeatable. No, it's not undefeatable. Cause like again, like just shit gets old. Like the relevancy machine can only be fed. It's a fucking insatiable beast, and it can only be fed for so long. But like, take all of my data, Chinese spyware. Like, I want you to have it all. Watch me do literally everything. But the thing is, like, I'm not going to engage because it's a slippery slope. 
Like I know like Jessica Alba is just like getting it and like trying to do a thing with her kid. Um, but like my algo is like perfectly curated. <laughs> like I have the, it's just all guys sneaking tiny cell phones in their butts into prison and like making content. Yeah, and just like shrieking drag queens. Like I've really gotten it down to exactly, and like hot boys with dick lines. Yeah, like biting their lips, just stuff I like. Um, and so TikTok is the sickest of all time, but like you gotta know when to fold them. Um, and at least for my brands, like I go, I can now go out and like find the sickest people to make content. Cause like, I'm not gonna come through as a 40 year old man, like trying to do this. Cause like, frankly, like you are playing yourself. And there is some sick shit. I don't know if you ever seen the German guy with tiny glasses who like reviews water. You ever seen that guy? You love that guy? Yeah, he's like, yeah, she loves him. oh my God. He's like, smart water's fucking trash. Yeah, he's, he's like, it's all branding. It's garbage, it's top, it's, it's fucking Brita. Um, like that guy's sick and he's way over 40, but it's just really hard. And so like at some point, like, you know, pass the fucking torch and like give it to the kids. But yeah, TikTok, like mm, the most, just the, the absolute most. Okay, next question. Yes. I don't know why I'm pointing. I'm not, I think I'm not my, in charge. I'm not job. in charge. Dude. Go ahead. Yeah. Oh, wait. I'm sorry. Mike. Mike, Mike, Mike. How did you come up with your idea about Vase Rosé? Um, again, it was like a, a sort of a reverse engineer. Like at the time, like the Rosé wave um, was, was cresting. Actually, it was funny. Part of it was because I read an article in the New York Post about a Rosé shortage in the Hamptons. <laughs> And it was, like, super fear-mongering, you know? They were like, it's fucking crazy. Like, women are hoarding bottles in the underground silos. Like, we're kind of world. And I was like, wow, like, I don't want my kids to live in that kind of world, you know? <laughs> There's not enough fucking rosé. Um, so that was sort of like a launch, like a sort of a, a springboard kind of narratively. Um, but again, it was just like asking my audience, like, what the fuck do you guys want? Um, what do you guys want? How do you want it? And then, like, trying to go out and actually make it. Like, I didn't really, like have to do that much like I think originally we were going to do like uh I was going to do like a like a like a liquor you know like a vodka or a tequila but there was like so much brand affinity right like you know what you drink you know what I mean like you're like I want Grey Goose I want fucking Tito's but like Rosé had no brands like you went up to a wine wall and it was like a thousand different things like written in French and script and like you know what I'm saying um and you were just like I don't know what the fuck any of this is you just were like give me something cold and slutty that I can drink at this pool party you know what I'm saying because I'm trying to tongue kiss yeah and so you weren't like asking for it by name. And I was like, what if we had like bold branding, you know what I'm saying, in a can. So again, you could like drink it in your Uber and like shotgun it or whatever at your desk at work because um, you're, you're an alcoholic. And um, you could see it from like super far away and like make the fucking branding bold. It was really, really that simple. Um, and it's just like, it came from just like the, my audience. I talk to these people every day. I'm up in the comments nonstop. Also, I respond to every fucking DM. No, you don't. Yes, I, I've DM'd you. No, so that's a fade. I was, that's okay. me nagging you. Yeah. <laughs> but people constantly are shocked because they're like, you'll never see this. And I'm drunk. But like, yo, worst. And then I'm like, bitch, surprise. <laughs> and then the next day, they're like, oh, my God, I'm a huge fan. Like, I'm coming to New York. Like, Do you want to chill? And I'm like, not really. Like, we kind of started with verbal abuse, but also, are you single? Yeah. Okay. Um, and so I answer every single DM. And I used to have a thing where if you invited me somewhere, I would go. Regardless, not for money, not for anything. Like if you were like, come to this, come to this fucking thing, I would just go alone, no fucking management, super dangerous. Um, I'd go to like fucking, I went to like a quinceanera, like I officiated a whole bunch of gay weddings. Like I did sick shit. The only thing I didn't do was like a bunch of like cokehead finance guys were like, come on a private plane with us to Vegas. And I was like, you think I'm going to be trapped in the sky with you motherfuckers? Yeah. yeah, right. Like these, you know, who think they're on millions. You know what I mean? Like a bunch of fleece vests. I was like, I'm not going to be stuck in the sky with you for five hours. But for the most part, I interact with everyone. I think that created like a trusted community. And so when it came time for me to be like, what do you guys want? They didn't think they were just like handing over their info. And I tried to give them something reasonably fucking priced that like made them feel um, less horrible. Yeah. Um, so am I supposed to? Or we have to wrap it up. OK, I'm so sorry, guys. Don't be mad at me. But we do have to get off the stage, I that's, think, now. That's it? I think so. OK. <laughs> Are you, are you going to be okay? I'm fine. I just like, yeah, I'm having. No, a, I was just having a good time. Yeah, I was having a great time. This is the Molly talking. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to miss you guys. Um, and that's it? There's no like outro music? <laughs> okay, here it is. Here it is. Thank you all. Thank you.